How y'all doing? Welcome back to the Seahawks Times. And today we're going to have a, a live q and A. I want to do, I want to field your questions. I don't want to rant on and on. I want to field your questions about the offseason and hear your opinions about the offseason and where you think this team is, who you want on this team, who you think should stay on this team, what we should do in the draft. Let's just get into it all. I've got some time tonight. I really, really want to hear your opinions with my fellow 12s. And it's going to be a fun year. I know there's a lot of in-between going on in terms of if we could be bad or we could be good. That's that's kind of how it feels every year since the the, the height of the Seahawks, you know, the, the past seven years at least. But today, uh, uh, tonight, wherever you are, I want to get into your questions. So this is going to be a Q&A. You can ask about my background with, with football and where it started for me. You can, you can ask about players, ask about teams. I'm obsessed with the Seattle Seahawks in a, in a healthy way, um, in a way that I hope that I can provide content to you that brings you value, that uh, we share opinions, we differ on opinions. Um, it's not important that my opinion is, is the, the one way or the holy grail. That's not what my channel is about. So today... It was announced, um, some of the news, uh, it was announced that, uh, I think Schneider, yeah, Schneider said that Chenna Nwosu and Abraham Lucas should be good to go for the beginning of the year. Now, I thought for sure Chenna uh, Nwosu was going to be good to go, uh, but you never know. Uh, but his injury was earlier in the season, so it makes sense that he's good. And what Nwosu brings to the edge and setting the tone and run defense and just skill, heavily underrated D. Let's see how he comes back from that injury. But that's big news for us because... We don't have exactly what we need out of Derek Hall right now um, yet. Yet. I'm not out on Hall. Remember, Derek Hall was born dead. Let's remember that. Derek Hall was actually born dead. So I think he can overcome a rookie season and have an impact as an NFL player, especially with Mike McDonald. So I'm still high on Derek Hall. I saw things. I saw the strength in the man. So that's the most important thing um, that happens in you know, rookie years uh, for, for edge players like that. It, it's common. Um, but Nuosu was a massive deal because when he was there early in the season, you could see the impact he made and throughout the, uh, the season last year. So great to hear that Nuosu's coming back, should be ready for the start of the year. Um, most importantly, that there's positive news about Abraham Lucas. I cannot stress enough to you the importance of this. Not that we know that Abe will come out and be 100% himself ever back to where he was, but it seems like he's going to be ready to play. And that is um, obviously big for our offense. And one of the things I really want to see um, in camp is Lucas uh, ease his way into the reps. And I hope that surgery went well because he's a great kid, a great leader. And he's uh, I think he could be a long-term cornerstone for this team if that knee issue is not degenerative. I'm pulling for you, Abraham. You're an awesome player, man, even though I'm a, I'm a Huskies fan. Go dogs! But shout-outs to Abe Lucas, and that's great to hear. Um, B March 1794, welcome. Uh, how you doing, brother or sister? Uh, probably brother. Uh, do you think the Seahawks defense is bad or is it not developed yet? I believe that the scheme uh, and the talent um, did not gel at all, and there is something missing in terms of. You know, if you're a Dune fan, we didn't have the spice. If you're a Star Wars fan, we weren't using the force. There's so much talent in the NFL, and you can look across all the rosters in the NFL and say, you know, one's more talented than the other, sure. But the margins are not that big. Maybe amongst certain players they are that big, but it's about how that team gels, how it's coached, and how that talent is utilized to play for this, their strengths. These guys have been playing football all of their lives, but they still are young people in a high-pressure environment. If you can get them to play loose, know what they're doing, know their assignment, and feel cohesive as a team, and get them back to that feeling they had in Pop Warner and in the height and when they were free and running around when there wasn't money involved, if you can make it fun like that, you see defenses like you see the Ravens defense. You see defenses like you see the Niners defense. You see defenses like we had with the LOB. You see great defenses come from really wanting the football, wanting it with your core, your passion. You're not thinking about the contract. You're thinking about the brother next to you and how you can get pumped up when you absolutely slaughter somebody in a healthy way and that ball pops out and you're all scrambling to the ball and you're pumped. 
That's what this defense lacked last year. We need to get turnovers. And I am thrilled that Mike McDonald is the guy to bring that culture. I love what he said about Witherspoon today. And that Witherspoon is a fun guy, but he was critical of his film. I love that he said that. He is not a complete project. And Mike McDonald will never look at a player as a complete project. He'll continue to develop them. Look at what he did with Jadavian Clowney. Look at what he did with Geno Stone. Look at what he did with Kyle Hamilton. We have players that are on that level and then some. I, I swear, maybe not a Hamilton lanky type talent, but we have guys. Like, is Woolen not special? Did Hamilton not struggle before? Let's be real so the defense today i don't know if it's better i don't know if it's worse but i do know it's going to be more exciting it's going to be a thrilling defense to watch so i'm gonna go out on a limb here and a lot of people are gonna say that this is impossible but <coughs> pardon me i believe and i would be willing to bet quite a lot of money that this defense is going to be much better this year um and that's not just off of guts that's off of the youth being brought into this defense and the players being brought in to fit the scheme that Mike McDonald wants to execute. Look, I'm a diehard Seahawks fan. I've been through all the eras. Homegrown, um, you know, Mora, Carroll, way, be, way before that. And what I feel is that when I've seen the great Seahawks defenses, they've not only had dynamic players, but they've had innovative defenses defenses that the league has not exactly figured out yet you can't just go cover three anymore and hope that no one's going to pick apart the zones and we were suffering for for quite a long time in that and uh carol's philosophies they really shaped a lot of things that happened in the nfl today however those philosophies have now been changed with different types of ways to attack them as you've heard on many of these channels over and over i don't need to reiterate that to you but to answer b march we're going to be a better defense yes it's not hard to be actually uh, uh specifically in the run game obviously but i think we're going to be better all around and turning the ball over getting our our field position um and getting our time of possession up to tire out the other team's defense because we can call turnovers because we can get off the field um i don't have proof like I said in my last stream, I have to see it in camp. Um, do you think Geno Smith will be the starter next year, 2025, or draft? I do not believe that Geno Smith will start um, the year after this season. I don't believe that. I think it's trending. I think they shopped Geno Smith heavy in the offseason. It was okay to keep Geno Smith because he is a really good quarterback. I don't think that they view him as a type of quarterback that you will pay hundreds of millions of dollars or they would have done so. Um it's definitely not going to be easy to find that quarterback. Um, you know, with Sam Howell there, I have more confidence that they're going to keep taking shots at it. And uh, I'm a lot higher on Sam Howell than a lot of people um, may be. And that's fair. If you're not big on Sam Howell, I get it. He threw 21 picks, but he also threw 21 interceptions. Josh Allen threw 17 interceptions last year. I know he's graded crazier and he's made more impact throws. He's not close to that, but we can talk about that over and over. A rookie quarterback thrown into the worst team in the NFL, in my opinion, uh, or one of them. Um, you know, he did okay. He performed admiral and he gave everybody fits. Uh, Bryce Young wasn't able to, to get off at all uh, with the Carolina Panthers. He wasn't able to do pretty much anything. Um, and I don't think his team was much worse than, uh, you know, maybe at receiver it was, but uh, he was just chucking the Thielen all day. <laughs> I would too. Um, more questions. Who's in here? Let's go. Come on. Let's do this tonight, guys. I got it. I got it. I'm feeling it. Uh, we got three of y'all in here. Let yourselves be known. Um, Cy Jen, of course, man, my guy. What's good, man? What do you think, Cy Jen? You know, I, I know you're all over the uh, the streams with uh, all of the legendary people out there that uh, broadcast about the Seahawks. What do you think is the outcome of the defense? As to his question, where, where do you think this defense is at? Um, right now do you think we are worse than last year better than last year are you in between do you think we've made steps forwards just by adding mcdonald alone in the young coaching staff and uh just bringing new energy i'm interested to see what you uh hear what hear what you guys think what do you think b march there might be some like but say something guys let's go this is a conversation tonight what I what what I want to reiterate here is I've got my little iPad up and I'm looking at the roster and there's a lot of players on here 
that could be replaced for sure. I, I already, I definitely feel that. But the retention of a lot of these players from last year um, surprised me and also gave me encouragement that they weren't cut. Uh, Sajid says, we'll be better than last year in my eyes. I just want to see it on the field. Yes, and it's kind of self-explanatory that way. We have to see it develop on the field because I think, let's be honest, we've been jaded, right? Like we've been kind of hurt the last couple years by being such a middling team. It's the the shock, you know, quote unquote, of the Wilson trade that wore off in, in a sense, you know, it still ripples throughout the NFL, how serious that was. But as Seahawks fans, we understand that there's more to our team and and Seahawks football than just quarterback play in the offense. Yes, we need the, the quarterback that gets us there, but we are predicated on energy and and just being live. And the defense is so important to Seattle. We're not just an I, I don't think our identity uh, hopefully will ever be purely on, on based on offense because I love defense and I don't want to see just a shootout team where we have to scrape by, um, you know, a win loss game versus Dallas or Detroit 40 points either way. I want to shut teams down. I want to give I want to get back to feeling like we did when we were smoking teams. You know what I mean? Um, burying teams. We may be a ways away, but I think we're back on the right path. Finally. Sajin says, my only concern is to enforce the trenches. First and foremost, we can gauge it from there. Yes. Uh, Reflect the sun. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Yeah, I'm back at it. Uh, Yeah, that is concerning because there's been some middling signings. Uh, Let's go over them. Uh, George Fant. I like the Fant signing because it's contingency for both swing tackles. Harris, Albuquerque. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, Let's get this right. Ankrum. Uh, Ankrum, everybody says, is just a a C-grade tackle. He hasn't played many games, but he got in some games recently, and he looked like he did okay. Uh, So maybe he's a little bit more than that, but he's definitely not a starter. Uh, Fant could start for you, but you don't want him to. We're talking about George Fant here. Uh, Harris, you know, he's kind of, you know, B-minus grade at best. Um, I think we're lucky this year that there's a deep draft uh, for offensive line. Uh, I like a lot of guards this year. I've studied a lot of them. So I think that we're going to find that if one, if not two um, guards I like, uh, you know, Cooper Bebe, Keegan. Um, there's many, there's many in those mid rounds. You know, if you want to go up high, you know, you get into your guards uh, slash tackle type prospects, you know, for Tanu, those type, if you can get those guys, great. I do think if we trade down a bit, let's go defensive tackle. Let's go offensive line. Don't complicate it unless Roma Dunze is there. (laughs) Yeah, you guys know how I am a while with it. Uh, Yeah, so great defense is so fun to watch. And it really makes it so fun to watch because what it does is when your defense is really out there kicking ass, it it makes it so like you get pumped because you know you're getting the ball back, especially after you score, right? Like say you score a touchdown and remember the days, it feels like so long, but you score. You know, Russ would go play action and hit somebody for a touchdown, Doug, or something. And then you get back on the field, and then they they march the field down. They they they're they're looking good. The offense that they're playing is looking good, and then bow. You know, Cam levels somebody, pick six, something happens, and then they got the ball back at their own forty again. And you're giving more shots to those players, and all of a sudden your offense can look really good um, when you get more opportunity. We're on the field all the time as a defense in the last couple seasons. It's absolutely insane. And, like, I watched a few games the, uh, last week. I watched a couple games, just random games from the season, and it didn't matter who we played. It's like we could not stop anybody from getting a first down. It was just crazy, man. So you can't tell me it's going to be worse. Um, you know, a pessimist would say, yeah, it could, but I like the linebackers. I like the safeties we, we have that we brought in. Um, and I do like the fact that some of these players are going to take, we always forget, like players take steps forward. You know what I mean? Players have injuries that they're overcoming and they're playing through them. So if we're healthier, we're more youthful. We have that, uh, wonderfully disguised defense that Mike McDonald brings to the table. We have the type of players with Mafe and we have the type of players with, um, uh, uh, Cheta and the interior line with Reed. I know those guys are getting older, but we have a few cats that can really tilt a game if they're put in position to do so. And I want to see it. Um, 
Reflect the Sunset, just chilling, uh, talking to, uh, to Cy Jan. Arias Dobbs, what's going on? What's good, bro? How do you feel if we draft Byron Murphy from Texas, defensive tackle, and quarterback Joe Milton from Tennessee University? This draft, I'm going to stay with the philosophy that Schneider has kept the past two seasons, which have been the past the two best drafts we've had in the past long, long time, maybe nine seasons. Uh, we're going to go best player available, but if there's somebody you see that you really think is special, I don't want him to be shy because that's part of the Seahawks and the Schneider draft identity as well, is go for something. I'll start with Byron Murphy. Byron Murphy, um, he may be overrated in some categories, okay? You know, let's not put him with Aaron Donald, Reggie White, anything like that. But Byron Murphy, to me, when I watch him, looks like the type of guy that can wreck a game at the right time. I'd attribute him to like maybe a younger, maybe less bull rusher type uh, Javon Hargrave, maybe a little bit shiftier, but I would absolutely love to see Byron Murphy on the Seahawks. I don't want to get Byron Murphy <coughs> necessarily at 16. I wouldn't be mad. I, I do think he's going to go earlier <laughs> in a lot of ways, but if I can trade back and get some more capital and Byron Murphy falls there, I, I like him. I also like Jers Newton. Um, uh, both of those guys I think really fit. Jaron Reed is about 32 years old now. Um, we, we don't really know what we have behind that, even though we got some cool young talent. That's a good idea to get one of those guys. Uh, and um, yes, I like them. Now, Joe Milton. Um, I've heard so many mixed reviews on Joe Milton, and they're fair. Uh, terribly inaccurate. Um, but I look at Joe Milton in kind of like a pretty safe player to put on your football team because he can do a lot of things. You know, at worst, Joe Milton can come in and learn behind some quarterbacks. And I think he has the arm to develop into a functional quarterback, but the threat that he brings in the running game and his ability to possibly be a tight end as well brings value. So I'm cool with Joe Milton uh, late fourth to seventh. Um, if you if the evaluators, the true pros, um, particularly Grubb, those guys, if they see Joe Milton as that type of player that can develop and he was just didn't have the development, he was behind hand and hooker there. Uh, watched a lot of his films and I think there's a long way to go for him. At his age, it's a bit tough, but that's okay. When you have that type of physical ability, it's worth a flyer. Um, but... Quarterback of the future, I don't know. But he could be one of those guys, Joe Milton, that you're watching. You know, another team just takes a flyer on him out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden you're watching like an AFC championship game, and you're like, we could have had Joe Milton, and he's like running, sh running the shop with the Jets or some shit. You know what I mean? Um, Sajin says, Adam's at linebacker. Is this true or the rumor mill? I think there's where there's this, – this last two seasons where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, if Jamal Adams wanted to come back on a super cheap deal, I think that they will entertain that. Um, people are hating that idea. And I can understand, right? It, especially some of the off-field stuff that J uh, Jamal had going on last year. I'm going to stick to my program with Jamal Adams. He's an emotional guy. He really loves football. Um, if you kind of put him on like and said, look, man, any any bull, any BS, you're out of here, man. Um, but there's worse guys you can have on the team than Jamal Adams. You just can't pay him that much. But imagine it'd be a crazy story if he had that one healthy season for really low money and he was just coming in in situations and just roaming the line of scrimmage when you're going three safety. You know you weren't going to drop him back. But he can definitely, you know, maybe attack some of the people in the run and closer to the line of scrimmage. Ah, for you know, for low money, I don't know. Uh, you got to put your kind of personal opinions of players aside sometimes, unless they're complete dirtbags. But Jamal Adams is, you know, he did some 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 crappy stuff on social, but you know, he's not on, the, he's not running away like Diddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, that's not even funny, man. Um. Also good to hear from the 12th man all day. Yes, it is. That's Arias Dobbs. Bully McGuire says, we will be a top 10 team this year. Last season, everything went wrong and still 9-8. and eight. Haters can suck it. <laughs> Bully, you got my attitude. You got my type of attitude, you know. Um, even just winning one more game would be great. And there's a lot of games last year that we could have lost that we won. <laughs> so... 
But I think those games didn't necessarily have to be that close if we just had some base functionality in certain situations that we weren't able to acquire last year. Um, I'm going to go back to the run game a lot. Like, I just, where was that K9 run like he had the year before against the Chargers, you know? Where was that K9 run? I guess he had another one against the Jets. Where, you know, he made some miraculous runs, but where, you, you got, you got, Charbonnet, you got K9. You know what I mean? Like, those guys are really freaking good, man. You can see it. And they're just barely getting tripped up. They just, they just need a little bit more blocking. And those guys are going to be something else, especially if they come into their peak. I'm excited about that running game, guys. Because off of that, if we have a stronger interior line and Gino can hold play action a little bit longer, he's one of the best play action quarterbacks in the NFL. And that's not... You know, that's not coming from like Gino's biggest fan, you know what I mean? But like, I, I call a spade a spade. Like, if we can get K nine a buck twenty, Charbonnet, you know, up to up to four, uh, 60 yards a game, and, a, and, and it's gonna be interesting because we have the talent and the threats. The offense isn't my concern. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. You know, maybe you have a point there. Like, we actually really were kind of hurting but we have some dynamic players that can win games i was at the game drew lock didn't necessarily win that game dk metcalf and i mean the throw was amazing and shout out to drew but dk metcalf and jackson smith and jigba they won that football game man i was there they they were possessed they were doing everything they could to get open we have those players we have those types of players no offense. He's that he's that good, man. Get him the ball. Those guys can win games. Um, if the defense can get the our team in a position to get the ball. <laughs> Thoughts on Seahawks, Seahawks staff mood. I'm happy with it myself. I'm I'm ecstatic. I've dug into more of these guys. Huff. Obviously, I know about Grub. If you're a UW person, you know about Grub. When I saw the, the picture of Grub at that table having the beer, like I knew it was on and I was really excited because this team is at the point to me where if you sign somebody we were familiar with or some, you know, kind of veteran safe play kind of offensive coordinator, I wouldn't be excited because like this, th these, this type of talent surrounded by Geno Smith and even like, yeah, let's say with Geno Smith, they need to be invigorated. They need to be told, look, if it's there, and you want to call if you want to do the snap audible and call a, a, a nine route and the protection looks good and you feel like you can burn this guy DKJ you feel like you can burn this guy Jake you think you can come back against this guy do it Jalen Polk who else we got Roma Dunze Westover McMillan DK Metcalf Tyler Lockett Jackson Smith and Jigba Jake Bobo, Noah Fan, Geno Smith, Michael Penix. This is not this is not a mystery what's going on here. This isn't like, you know, unsolved mysteries. Ding, 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 you know, this is structured. This is what's supposed to happen. And I feel good about that with the grub hiring. Huff. Love it. I love the continuity on. The, I love what that's going to do to our O line. It's going to look better. Oluwatimi, that's my guy. Oluwatimi was underrated when he played last year. There was one game where Olu. I'll get back to the coaches where Olu came into the game after the, an injury to Evan Brown. Oh man, I don't remember exactly when it was. It was kind of mid season, and there was it was Carolina, I think. Okay, and it was uh, it was Derek Brown, who's a great interior pass rusher. Oluwatimi hadn't played in the NFL more than like seven snaps at that point. Uh, probably, he came in the game. They tried to stunt and just bull Oluwatimi, who's not the biggest guy, but he's one of the smartest guys. I put it on my mama that if Oluwatimi did a, a a test, an IQ test, or some sort of wonderlick test, he'd be one of the smartest guys in the NFL. He stonewalled Brown and we scored a touchdown. He needs to work on some things. He's not uh, God sent to uh, the center position, but they're familiar with him. I think they trust him. He knows how to call things. He can call things out. 
if he can just snap and anchor and, 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 and guide the, the guards around him, it's going to look good. It's going to look better. And I felt better. I know Brown was serviceable, but I felt more excited and better about things when Olu was in the game. Is that fair? I don't know if that's fair. Maybe I'm crazy. Um, the rest of it, Leslie Fraser, uh, coaching. Uh, phenomenal guy. His defenses uh, for a time there with the Bills were in the top five in the NFL. Uh, Leslie Fraser's fantastic. He's just very steady. He brings a steady thing. Even though he's older, he doesn't, he doesn't look like a grumpy old guy. But he brings a steadying, uh, you know, father figure type presence. That kind of presence that Carol has, but, but with maybe a little bit more um, tough love, uh, but also uh, with a little bit more, um, a little bit less stubbornness in terms of changing things up and trying people out in different uh, spots. Um, I was kind of upset to lose Izzo. I, I don't know if Izzo got a fair crack. Uh, really happy with retaining Carl Scott. I think he did a great job uh, with the secondary, and he had guys playing at a pretty high level. Um, outside of that, it's Mike McDonald's team. Um, Mike McDonald is going to be the one that really makes and shifts this franchise uh, towards the future. I just feel it in his presence. He's really dedicated. He looks like a really cool guy, sounds like a, a really cool person. Um yeah, so let's move on here. Bully McGuire 69 says, um, McDonald's going to get us right discipline. That's my coach for real. It is. Mine too. I feel good about it. When it was first, okay, before all of this stuff happened, I was talking with people. I was chiming in on blogs, blah, 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 doing my thing, just kind of trolling around, taking a break from the channel. And I was really high on, um, on getting, uh, come on, man. It's been so long. That's how crazy this the NFL is. I was high on getting to Detroit's OC. And uh, I was kind of buying into that. And, and that's fair. I was excited about it. Um, but when McDonald was my second uh, the whole time. Um, then he kind of leapfrogged right at the end, even before it was announced to my first when I started watching Ravens games, when I watched the Ravens film. Because I started looking at the roster. And I was like, man, we had Jadavian Clowney when he was like 24, 25. And why is he playing better now? Why is Geno Stone getting picks and Diggs isn't? Why? Why is Patrick Queen doing what Jordan Brooks can't? Why? Why, why, why? And then I looked to the sideline in those games and Mike McDonald's is there with his hat. He's like, he's like, you know, he's like. And that's why. <laughs> and he's our coach now. Um, Reflect the Sun Kid says it's kind of funny. Um, I want to see Zach truck more people. Yeah. Someone said that. Um, he wasn't that powerful. Like, yo, in that in that Carolina game, he trucked a dude to space, bro. He trucked a dude. A dude like literally is up there with Starlink satellite right now. The guy that the guy that Charbonnet trucked in the end zone um, or close to the end zone is still is still orbiting, man. He's up there with Wally right now. Wally, he's up there with Eva and Wally fro floating around. I want to see him just go downhill and smash people. Um, and then cut right if they try to, yeah, yeah, he's shifty. Um, Reflect the Sun says, right, I sure hope they nail a Pro Bowl O-lineman in this draft. Yeah, or even just a good one. You know, if, if there's a Zeitler on the open market, someone is good or quickly can get to that level. Um, I would love it to be a Pro Bowl caliber guy. Um, I think Huff can build those types of players up, though, so I'm not so sold that they have to go as early as everyone is saying because i think with all of the qbs being taken early which there will be many um we can find some sneaky stuff man example um if it's not gonna happen but if if a dunze fell would you take a dunze or you know a non-fatanu or foaga kind of o-lineman would you do that you know would you would you take um uh, a chop Robinson, you know, would you, it's hard. It's really hard. They're in a really interesting draft position. Um, so it's hard to say, but they do need to see. That's what's the problem with this is my mind. You said it right there. Our team is pretty nicely balanced, even though we're not over the top, like star power, but we need the trenches. Like if we get the trenches and we don't sleep on that in this draft, at least, like, in the, the, the quality players, 
even if they're wherever we take them, like just get the quality, good BPA players, um, not reaching for need, we will be a better team to watch for sure. Uh, Side just hit the likes. I appreciate it. Um, so I just said, when will we when will we get to see K Mac? Very interested in seeing what he brings to the table. It's super interesting, man. I can't solve that that puzzle. Well, what happened to 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 Kenny McIntosh? You know, like what what was it? Because it just felt like a weird strain. And then DJ got all the the work. And did they redshirt him? Because he's not that young. With like, what's going on? We're gonna find out soon. That's what's dope. We'll find out based on like the type of running back if they draft any at all. For competition or if i think kenny could be the perfect third down back judging by his college film like he just looks like that dude he can catch like if you know that's what you need out of your third down back i want somebody better than travis homer um but and better than dj dallas i like those players a lot but someone that's a little bit more dynamic that you you, you know that if you had to get him the ball um, they might not. They might just get more than a few yards or catch the ball and get and get smashed out of bounds. They they might break a play. Uh, K K Mac can do that, and then he can also run routes. That's the cool thing about Macintosh. Um, he can run real routes, like real receiver route tree, and you can get really weird on wheels and like uh, spinning guys out. Like when we split out Charbonnet right now, you you probably know. Like we threw to him, like you know whatever. But K Mac will like take a screen. You know what I mean? Um, Reflect the Sun says really was a phenomenal season for the dogs. It was amazing. And the, 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 the last game there against Michigan, it wasn't as much of, of a dominating game as, it, as, it, as people thought. Like, I watched that game a couple times. Like, you know, they missed a Dunze there late on that route. There's a couple missed assignments. Michigan was a great team, man. Let's, let's give it to them. Um, we weren't able to get home because they, ha they have a pretty nice O-line in Michigan. And we should maybe look at poaching some of those guys because they're going to feel comfortable um, with, with who's around there. Uh, Aries Dobbs. You are my new favorite Seattle Seahawks sport update analyst, bro. Keep up the good work. Hey, <laughs> that means a lot to me, man. Thank you so much for saying that, Arius. Uh, yeah, I've been, I'm going to focus on doing it a lot more. And uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You know, show your boys some love. I, I do some videos. I'm, I'm very sporadic. I'm not very regimented. But uh, I think I try to bring some conversation worth discussing. Um, but thank you so much for that. And uh, Bully McGuire 69 says, I really love this coaching staff. I think we got a lot of potential. I feel like Grubb's going to be utilizing these weapons unlike last year. And that's exactly it. Waldron, man, it got really boring, man. Like, it was like, oh, uh, like, how much, like, how much can we just, like, have the same looks all the time? Uh, when you have that level of players, it's really frustrating because we do. Don't let last year fool you. We do have receivers that can catch multiple touchdowns. It's just... You gotta you gotta scheme them open. I'm not saying Waldron's horrible, but it just got stale. Um, Bully McGuire also says, "I really love this coach." Oh yeah, that's a duplicate Ted. That's okay. Reflect the Sun says, "I watch every UW game." Grub drew up some great deception. Yeah, I love that part of it. Reflect the Sun. It's this deception. It's like even in what it's kind of like he's the offensive Mike McDonald. That's what this is. There it is. Da -da -da -da. Ding. I'm not the brightest. Uh, the brightest cat in the in the hen house. <laughs> but like listen. Grub is that guy. He's wild, but he's not dangerous. You know what I mean? But he is innovative and I think he's licking his chops looking like, man, I could I could really get nasty and shock some people. And you know, He's trying to get an offensive uh, – he's trying to get a head coaching job sometime too, right? So he's going to try to really – don't think that they're going to come out and just try to win four games and get a top QB. No. The fear is, is that they'll be middling and will forever be trying to find a quarterback. I get it. I get it. I get it. But we have a team that could get really weird. And I, finding the top five NFL quarterback is never an easy feat, you know? But if this year they look at it and they do really well – and they start looking at the team like, man, this is really a Super Bowl caliber thing we got going on with coaching, training, um, you know, dietitians. It's the whole package down to the water, water boys and girls. If they got it all and they see that they think the team is uh, is there, then you go next year and you say, look, what do I have to do to to sell the moon to get to that place where I'm in? The, the 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 spot where I can put a quarterback against Sam Howell and say let's freaking go you know 
but we need to see who wants to be part of that. It's like, who wants to play their hearts? And that's what I think we're going to see. No one is safe. There's, there's no more, there's no more Carol guys. There's, you know, barely Schneider guys. Schneider's job is on the line. Like they got to win some games. Jody, whether she wants to stay with the team or not, this team, you, if you're a real Seahawks fan, you're not ever thinking tank. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a winner. Like me, Wes, I'm a winner. I want to win. And I love the Seahawks and I'm proud that they, they want to win. I've been part of them when they've lost for so many de uh, decades. Let's never go back. Let's win every game we can. And that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna try to do. Uh, great point on the deception of Grubb. He's really good at that. So I was before I got excited, Mike McDonald's disguises, he disguises defenses. And, and even though Grubb is very spread, his run game is really good too. So with what we have, K9 is more than he's ever had. Um a Dunze super talent, but like it's very it's very similar. Like the, the personnel is very similar, and I think he can get busy. Um, just don't get Gino killed on the inside of the offensive line. <laughs> you know, uh, PFF sure didn't like Brown. He was in the he was in the fifties. Um, which Brown? Which Brown? Just let me know which Brown you're referring to. Um, PFF doesn't like the Seahawks. Period. It's true. PFF is biased towards some some things. I think there's some grain of salt to PFF, and there can be some truths involved there. Um, but. It's not always true. Like, you know, like a lot of people said that with Tyrell Dotson, they put Tyrell Dotson is like, you know, he didn't play at all, but there's some truth to how good he is in coverage. I've seen it. He's not the best, but man, I'd say he's probably top 10 at least in coverage. Uh, for and, and that's a big deal. Neither of our uh, linebackers last year were grading out in that. And uh, Jerome Baker as well. So if you're tired of getting just disgustingly destroyed by late crossing routes by Puka Nakua and freaking everyone else in the NFL, well, maybe this is something we don't have to deal with anymore. Make them catch it underneath and get smashed. I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this route. First down. I, I'm sick and tired of it, man. Um, they aren't that the end-all be-all, of course. It's true. Uh, PFF holds weight, but some people too much weight in that stuff. I, you know, it's a healthy medium. Watch the games. Are they players? Are they ballers? Are they not? Uh, Sajin says, Sharp pushed the man spirit out of him with that hit, that hit. Yeah, that truck by Sharp. And we will, and we all saw it come back into him on live TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch that tonight just because you said that. He hit him. His soul left him like Warner Brothers, like, like he just left. And then we saw when they panned back to him, he settled in and he woke up. <laughs> he was okay. Um, that was just good, clean football. Uh, Bully McGuire says, I do wish we could hurry and find the QB of the future soon already, though. I know it takes time. I just wish we had the position solved already. As I was also so disappointed in not playing Kenny at all. And that's a good point. Like, there's no given that we find that guy. You, you know, you kind of know what Gino is. Um, will they build around him in time for him? Eh, you know, um, I'm not doubting you, Gino Smith. Like, there's, there's way worse QBs. Um, way less talented QBs that have won Super Bowls. It's about the talent around you as well. Um, and in this NFL and with the narratives that go around it, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like the narratives, I'm not going to get all conspiracy theory, but are, are they going to have Geno Smith get, get the, the roughing the passer call versus, you know, even a Brock Purdy when it's time? I hate to say that, but man, that's how I feel. Um, unless you have like a stud somewhere else that takes away more shine, um, to level that playing field, uh, it's not going to be easy to find that quarterback. It absolutely will not. But uh, there's some guys I like this year that it could be kind of weird, man. And one of those guys I want to talk about, I'll talk about a little bit later if you guys stay tuned. But I want to get into it, and I want to get into my theory on that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about that later. Bully McGuire says Shane Waldron ju uh, just does the same play calling again and again and again, and I can't stand it. Second and long, it's run up the middle. It's third and long, and it's just screen of JS, and I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, it's maddening. The whole thing was maddening. The whole thing, um, you know, and I, I love all the Seahawks coaching staff and everyone and all the players that have come through here that have been good people, um, but it got tiring, and I think... 
I think it's just so, look, let's not worry. Okay, friends, you're my friends, for sure. Let's not worry about going deep into a playoff run. Let's just be something new, something different. Copycat league no longer. Everybody knows what everybody else is trying to do. Cover two shell. You have to have someone as good as Mahomes to pick people apart underneath. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go crazy. Let's cause turnovers. Let's get to like 2.5 turnover average a game and see what happens. <laughs> I love football. Evan Brown, when you were discussing giving Olu a bigger role, um, yes, Brown wasn't good like he wasn't terrible i think he's better than that grade but he got bullied by the bigger dts and even though the olu's a little uh like shorter and stuff he's way stronger you know what i mean olu was in the big 10 he came out there I, after that after that derrick brown blocking and just just a consistent i never saw anyone really just blow by him even if they pushed him back he just knows what's going on, what D-lines are trying to do. And sure, he'll get beat every once in a while. There'll be, there'll be learning curves. But I think he could develop into a good center. And, and if they don't bring in somebody super early like Jackson Powers or something or, or get somebody in F.A., I don't think that whoever that kid is, Olu will let him win the job. I think he'll just play harder and better. That's just my take on it, man. Um, Bully McGuire said, K-9 is actually dirty. He's so slept on. He is. I just wish he could play an entire season so people could see how good he is. The dude turns nothing into something. Yeah, he's super good. And you can play a little bit longer, too. If and um, he was, He's being a too shifty. He gets criticized for that. But that's his part of his game. I don't want him to lose that. I don't want him to think he has to be a downhill runner. That'll shorten his career. Get outside. Do the Reggie Bush stuff. Uh, don't get hit, but but get the get. The, we need the blocking, right? Like we need K nine. That's the thing. Is like, why are we forcing K nine to be an inside runner? Anytime K nine can bounce it outside with even a half a yard of space, he's almost gone. And if you could have guys downfield like um like uh our new tight end uh, Farrow Brown, um, even Bobo. Uh, with 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 those schemes, if you get that downfield blocking that you don't see on the TV, but you can see in all twenty two, and that second le second level blocking from your guards and stuff, man, K nine could really go crazy, guys. I'm calling it right now. If the offensive line comes together, we're gonna look at K nine like one of the top three running backs in the NFL because they will, Grub will have no problem and McDonald will have no problem just running down your throat like. He will not care. It's everything Pete wanted to do. If you get that O-line established with Huff and them, man, this kid is really good, man. And his the injuries he's he's taken have not been devastating or crushing. They've been pretty minor. So he's coming out pretty healthy and looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that. And Charbonnet, like if teams want to try to get nasty and stuff and, and, and get dirty, you just give him a breather and say, hey, Zach, like – why don't you why don't you just run through this guy's face? You know what I mean? Like um he Zach Charbonnet is performing like Mortal Kombat fatalities, you know, on all 22. Good point though, Bully K9 is nasty. Uh, Evan Brown is a Cardinal, so we'll be drafting a center, I guess. I I don't I don't know if like I don't know if we'll draft one early. You know what I mean? Like my my take on it is like they feel Olu. I, I I could be wrong, man. Like I'm not I'm not a pro at this. I could be wrong. Uh, let me look at the roster here. Is there anybody behind Olu that could play center? I'm looking at it right now, man. Um, man, literally like nothing. So maybe we need to we need to do that um, at some point just for contingency. But then you got also got FA and you got people. That position is some – you might not find a dynamic person. But, yeah, we we might need to address, like, find a combo-type guard that can play both positions. That Zach Frazier guy is interesting. I like him out of West Virginia. Uh, I don't know if he could transition to guard. Um, I don't think Olu necessarily transitions to guard against certain matchups. But he could be right, man. I, I Like, any time I try to predict a Seahawks draft, I maybe hit – four percent of it <laughs> whoever thinks they hit on seahawks drafts they're lying to you man like nobody's right jeremiah none of those guys know what john's ever gonna do and i think it'll be even more freakier now that pete's gone to be honest with you um i try to get one in when i can okay you guys are clowning that's cool uh love the love the chatting here uh bully mcguire i like gino i think he's good you know and with grub and a better o-line i think he could be great 
Uh, I just don't think he gets us over the hump unless we're stacked. Also, Gino plays awful against the Niners. <laughs> Jeez, man, that's kind of true, isn't it, right? Like, that type of pressure rush, you know, he just, he just, like, he's just, he can't do it against those teams. He's having a hard time against the division, really. Um, but those are the, those are teams that have insane D-lines, you know what I mean? He was dealing with Aaron Donald, he was, de- he was dealing with Le- Leonard Floyd for a while, he was dealing with the Niners D-line. It's not easy for anybody, so let's not judge him completely based on that, because he had poor pass protection, right? Like, but uh, getting over the hump, yeah, like, I think Geno Smith would have to have a more complete roster. Um, he's proven that he's kind of can come back to win some games, and uh, I, I like him. I'm glad he's my quarterback right now, uh, I, you know, and that we're not scrambling and, and just hoping Sam Howell uh, makes it pop. I'd be pumped to see Sam Howell. I wasn't mad at Drew, but all these guys, they kind of don't give me the vibes. Like, uh, Geno Smith is a leader. It gives me good vibes, and... and if it was like a super, if you fluked out and got into the Super Bowl somehow, like Geno Smith is the type of guy on some Kurt Warner shit that like really might just go crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the thing. I've seen Geno, like we've seen Geno go crazy now. It's just consistently throughout a season at his age. I don't know. But given the, the situation, um, I've been critical because he's, you know, he's fumbled in some critical situations and made, made the wrong decisions. But man, the way he developed so late in his career. I also have that flip side that, like, man, maybe he can be on, like, that kind of path of the late bloomer that's just, like, he's still improving. I, I don't know. That's crazy. Um, he's a special person, man. Geno Smith is a special person. Um, I'm in the 49ers chat. They're saying that Seattle will be very different next season. Uh, yeah. And and uh, uh, you're, you're in the Seahawks chat, and they're saying that the Seattle – Yeah. Okay, uh, either or. I think everyone's talking about us being different. Like, we're going to look different. It's going to be crazy because it's going to be shocking to us. Um, there's a chance that my brother's number's up for the season tickets uh, finally after like 10 years. So I'm going to try to get the four set and go to plenty of games. I go to a few games if I can every year. Um, but watching it live is so crazy. And, and I think this year we're going to look different in a lot of ways. Um, and... One thing I'll say about going to the games last year that I didn't feel in the previous two or three, I felt the energy come back to the stadium. Even even though we were kind of a dull team, I, I feel like there's a generation coming out there that's really buying in again to, to the home field thing. And that's going to factor. And if, if McDonald pushes that narrative and continues that um, that culture and and pushes on fans that that's, that's important to them, man, it could get nasty if the defense gets rowdy because remember what it was like. And that's when you can start demoralizing teams early. Um, Bully McGuire says, for sure, I think we play better next year, but Gino plays so bad against the Niners every damn time, and I hate the Niners with a passion, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Fair, man. You know, it's hard. It's, it's never hard. Like, we, we had the Niners, you know, we were on their ass for a long time. You know, and they did a great job of putting that team together. And, you know, they came up short. And as much as I despise the Niners and all that stuff, um, and it's hard for me to say, but some of my some of my good friends are, are, are real Niners fans. Like, not not like bang, bang, like weirdo, like annoying ones, but like cool ones. Uh, even though some of those bang, bang heads, they are real. Um, it, they, they did a great job of putting that team together. It's just that. It took them a long time to do that. They drafted great, like, high picks at defense for, for many, many years. And then they, they leveraged the farm on free agents, the best players. Like, like McCaffrey, like, they leveraged, leveraged on some of the best players in the world. Um, and shout-outs to them for, let's be real here, like, like doing that with Brock Purdy. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not hating on Purdy, but, like, for them to even get to where they did, it's impressive to me. To me, it's the opposite of, like, they shouldn't be really like I hate to say this, guys, but for them to do that, sure they 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 fumbled the bag, but like I'm a Sonics fan. Like when we got to the finals, man, we 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 came up against Jordan, you know, and we weren't gonna, you know, unfortunately we couldn't win, and we gave them a great fight. But man, you're up against Jordan, and that's what happened to the Niners, bro. The last the last couple times to them, and that's uh that's how that will go down in history to me. It's like man, if if Jordan if Mahomes wasn't on the other side of that. I, I don't know. You know, maybe you win too, guys. And it's not, this isn't from a hater perspective. And yes, I, trust me, guys, you can still sub. Like, 
I will I will go off on Niners fans, bro. Like when they try to get in on me, like I'll bring up the stats. I'll bring up the stats, bro. I mean, shot, you know, like like recently at least. Like you can't we can't live in the past and you know, I I I think that this season is last season I thought maybe we could split. This season when I look at the Niners and the Rams, I think the way that McDonald can match up we're going to get some divisional games. We're going to win some of these divisional games. And that's going to go a long way with our confidence and in, in getting over that hump and getting a playoff game, but also being sneaky if we do get that playoff game. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be super fun to watch. Um, expect high flying, um, lots of motion, lots of spread, lots of peppering the ball around. Lots of just stretching teams out and forcing them to, to make somebody tackle K-9 one-on-one, make somebody uh, jump with DK. You're going to see different stuff, and it's going to pump you up, like pump you up. I don't know why I said that. I kind of got the sweater like the Arnold Schwarzenegger in uh, like, the, like the old Saturday Night Live, pump you up. You know, I got the cap on. You know, I bought this just outside the stadium, uh, that, that Eagles weekend, you know. If you know, you know. Um, yeah, I see Kenneth Walker turn a one-yard loss into a five-yard gain or like a 50-yard gain sometimes. Yeah, the guy can like – he's like – Kenneth Walker is Nightcrawler if you guys are into uh, uh, X-Men. He's just – he's there and he's not. Um, I want revenge against the Rams and the Niners and Rams, brother. Yes, it's bitter. It's bitter. It's evil. They've had their little words lately and they're like – you know, we've done our things and we've got our things and you guys are this and, you know, you know, they've been able to chirp lately after we were dominating for a while, like a decade. But now enters Mike McDonald enters the chat. You know what I'm saying? Mike McDonald, all five foot one of him comes in and says, he played linebacker? Where? Where did he play linebacker? Mike McDonald comes in and says, no longer Sean McVay. Now. You want to run some misdirection pre-snap? Okay. They're going to run misdirection. Whether you hand it off or not, whoever, whoever's in the flat is getting smoked. Whoever takes that end around is getting smoked. Whoever tries to catch that thing over the middle is getting walloped. You better have some good fade routes still in you, Matt Stafford. Brock. Brock Purdy. God's gift to football. America's sweetheart. You better get an iron chin strap, bro. (laughs) Because Mike McDonald's defense is going to be nasty as hell. (laughs) I can't wait, bro. Oh, man, you guys, man. I'm I'm not always right, you know. I'll tell you the couple things I'm not good at analyzing. I'm not good at analyzing what teams are going to do at quarterback. You know, I'm not the QB guy. One thing I am pretty decent at, is defense and everything else on 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 offense. Um, I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's not gonna. It's it's gonna be. It's gonna shock some people. It's gonna shock some people. Whether it takes a few games at the beginning or the end, it's gonna be nasty. <laughs> Bet your bottom dollar. Uh, Sigens, especially the Niners. I hated them ever since. I hated the team and fan base as much as that. They're pretty, they're pretty savage, man. They're pretty frustrating. They're pretty quiet right now. Uh, three Super Bowls and lose all three. Um, Niners are done. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, man. That's rough. It's like you can look to your heritage and, man, we won, we, we won these Super Bowls, you know, quest for six. And then you look at it like, damn, bro. Like, how do you, how do you not win one of those, man? Like, and we get shit on for Wilson and in the in the in the, in the, the throw at the one, but it's like, man, you guys lost hella Super Bowls, man. You lost hell of them. What you talking about, bro? Our 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 business has only been open since '76. We got lots of time, and I think our time pending the quarterback question. Is on the arrival. We uh, uh, horizon. We got eleven people in the chat here. Shout your name up. We've been going for an hour. I'm gonna keep going. Um, shout out your names. Uh, Gino is such a sweet passer. If you give him time, yeah, one of the nicest spirals in the league, man. It's clean. Um, are you, are we still up at the 16th spot? Or are we trading up? Uh, are we still at? Yeah, we'll, we'll, trade trade down. I think trade down. 
and unless somebody soured on one of those quarterbacks, um, that's not that's not McCarthy because I, I think Sam Howell could be as good as McCarthy, <laughs> you know, or better. Um, it's my t- two cents. Um, yeah, you trade down. You trade down. You can stay if you absolutely are fascinated by what fell to you outside of QB. Um, but trade down. Let's get some picks. Let's get a bunch of picks. And uh, yeah, because I, I, the, the, the depth at our, our positions of need is very good, you know. Um, and I think we can sneak a receiver in there uh, to replace Lockett. Um, and uh, that's, that's something I think John might stab at. The uh, reason why I hate the Niners so much is because I don't know what no one what no one says. No fan base runs their mouth like the Niners and they get toxic. Like, ah, Cowboys are pretty loud too. Uh, Pats are pretty arrogant. Cowboys, Steelers. Uh, but yeah, SF gets pretty wild when they're winning. It's like it's, it's, they're, they're not going to lose. And they, Man, I was at a Super Bowl party and it was like a mix of fans. And, you know, they it was... It was hard to watch, man. I think it was it was just as hard as the the uh, the Wilson pick, man. It's like at least you're losing to the goat and whatever you want to say. Like that was devastating, but man, they, it was crushing for them. Uh, this wasn't Bo Nix check downs either. <laughs> Reflect the sunset for real. Gino was like seventy three percent. Yeah, Gino's like one of the most efficient passers in the game. Um, I. If he was 25 and doing this already, I'd say let's not worry about it. Let's keep working with this. But at 32, 33, you know, that's where um, that's where it changes my philosophy there a little bit. And that's no shade on him. But it's like we can win some games with Geno Smith. We've proven that. Uh, can we win two or three more? Can we win three more games? You know, that's where it would be hella interesting. And does he – is he – the uh, part of the reason that we get over though that hump, um, Bo Nix checkdowns, yeah, Bo Nix, <laughs> like man, uh, the Anakin Skywalker of the coaches of the NFL has arrived. Michael Crowhorse says yes. Uh, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Coach Mike D and we'll uh, and we'll line up all with John to get our revenge. Ram, uh, Rams and Niners. Why can't I read today? I'm sorry. Rams and 49ers. Uh, since get back time, go Hawks. Maybe because y'all are writing like, like uh, a little bit broken, but that's okay. Much love to you, Michael Crowhorse. Great to see you, um, Mr. Chavez. There, um, I need to see my I need to see my ass in Lumen Field someday. Um, this is Billy McGuire. I've seen Seattle in person once, but I need to get to Lumen Field eventually. It's worth it. Like it, it might feel overwhelming and expensive, and it is. But dude, going to a Seahawks game, especially a primetime game, man. There's nothing like it, man. There's only a couple things in life, and I, I won't say what they are that are as good or better. Um, Chris! <laughs> My guy. Uh, speaking of different, are we the Seahawks going to be sporting any new helmets or uniforms? I've heard they're not. I, I've just The clickbait thing, some say yes, some say no. It'd be sick if they did, Chris. Uh, we just need new something. <laughs> Cameron Robinson, my my God. Yes, BM69, it is wild there. For sure it is. Cameron knows. What up, Wes? Cameron says, excited to see how we gel on the field. It's all about team chemistry. And earlier on the stream before you were there, that's what I was saying. People were like, will you think it'll be better or worse? Um, it's about how we get down, how we groove. Kind of like, it's like a Seattle thing, man. You know, if you've ever been to Seattle, it's like, it just fits the atmosphere. Um, Bully McGuire uh, Witherspoon going to be top two cornerbacks this year and ain't going to be number two. <laughs> Good point, man. I mean, PFF really hated on Spoon last year. Like, was he not the best rookie in the NFL last year? Like, I like Will Anderson and I'm, I'm D'Amico Ryans did great things and they went further. But uh, Spoon, though, <laughs> man. Oh, man. I was, at, I was at the Cardinals game and they tried to catch something in the flat to uh, – What's his name? Rondell Moore or something. They threw something over to Rondell Moore in the flat. And, bro, Spoon collapsed, bro. Like, he capsized, dude, like, on some, like, you sunk my battleship, bro. And he, it's like, watching him hit live, that hit, the hit that he laid on the running back to the Giants, uh, when that Giants running back tried to run that little, like, outside bounce slash inside run and Spoon, it just sounded like, man, it sounded like a 12-gauge, bro. It was like, bang! Like, he just... He just clack, and then 
I was watching the replay of that. I was like, oh, did, did Bobby get in there? Did Bobby shoot the gap and hit him? And it was Spoon. Spoon came out of, the, out of this pile of gigantic, gargantuan giants. Little, little Spoons in there like, what's, what's popping? What did he say? No, he was like, I can't say what he said, but he was like, I'm here. He's like, I'm here. Like, like, like come on, man. I'm going to do a short. I'm going to do a short. Just to, just for that hit, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a short off that hit. Mark my words, all twelve of you in here tonight. If you're awake, I'm gonna do a short with a voiceover of that hit. Cause that hit, not the pick six. That hit let me know that Witherspoon is a franchise player. Who is five eleven, five ten and a quarter, one eighty five, ex basketball player, playing in New York? In the NFL, that hits a dude like Cam Chancellor. Who else ever, man? Maybe Earl. Like, like, what's happening? I get excited about defense, man. I need to chill out, bro. I'm sober, guys. That's the thing. It's like, this is just me. Like, ask my friends. Ask my wife. Ask my family. This is me. I get too pumped on football. <laughs> so this is more of a creative outlet for me to, to vent. And I really appreciate you guys coming in here and being part of my madness. Um, who's your favorite QB in the draft this year? Also, do you think Williams is a bust? I do not think Caleb Williams is a bust. I would agree with like, uh, what did what did Homeboy say? Um, uh, Brendan and Brendan, I was watching one of their lives the other night and they, they broke it down well. Like there's a huge floor for Caleb Williams just because of his ability to create plays. Um, there's something about Caleb Williams that's missing to me in terms of a poise factor. Um, I think he's going to be good, though. I do. I do. I think he's going to be good. Is he going to be the best one of this draft? As so many drafts have proven that we don't know, man. <laughs> we don't know. I watched a lot of Caleb, and he did some amazing stuff, and he didn't have the greatest team. But I'm not sure. Um, my favorite quarterback in this draft Oh, man, it's crazy for me to say this, guys, because a lot of people are going to disagree. Um, it's uh, it's Spencer Rattler. <laughs> it's crazy. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know why exactly. I just, man, watching him play, it just gives me the feeling, man. It gives me that feeling I feel when I love, like, that he can do just different type of shit, man. It's like a Steph Curry. It's like he's just so naturally gifted. If it ever translates to any form of NFL success, I have no idea. But he's so good, man. He's so good, guys. Like, I just want to take a shot at it, man. Um... Never got to see my Seahawks play at home. I'm coming. <laughs> You're coming, Cy Jen. If you don't, if you live in Washington, man, I don't see how you can't. But uh, it's also very expensive. It's not easy. Uh, he was the defensive rookie of the year. If he didn't miss a couple of games, Spoon makes that easy for sure. But um, it'll just motivate Spoon. He's he's never gonna stop. I love Spoon's interviews too. Like you know, Devin was like, look, like it's not about that kind of stuff. It's about winning games. <laughs> you know, like Devin doesn't care. Devin could you could give Devin no props, and and he just would on the low be like, cool, that guy thinks he's better. Watch me just pop his head off. <laughs> I love when he talks to those Florida guys. He like, man, I'm not really about my own stale stuff, you know what I'm saying, type shit. <laughs> um, few pieces on offense. Uh, Keep Count says uh, some new faces on defense. Offense is going to be uh, explosive this year. Yep, that's facts. Good point. Um, Billy McGuire says, I stay in Houston, so I know a lot of Texans fans. Never thought I'd be jealous about anything Texans get. Yeah, CJ Stroud is awesome and a great person. Great interview. Uh, Brady played... Uh, until 45, Aaron Rodgers, 41. Yeah, exactly. Gino's not all the way done yet. I reflect the sun. That's true. I just don't think it's the long, long-term answer. Um, reflect the sun says, I was so upset when the, they picked Spoon, for sure. Um, it was like, I wasn't because I was nerding out about it heavy. Um, but I can see why people were. I, I did not think he'd be that crazy in the NFL. Because it's like Illinois, right? It's like you're like, ah, you know, he's a little undersized. Well, you know, they're reaching. But damn, is he good. Um, and I don't think there's going to be a step back either, barring anything happening. 
Uh, why did I have a feeling you was going to say where? Because, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm about – like, I look at this quarterback class and I'm going to tell you, that, like, honestly how I feel about it. I don't think it's that special, man. I don't. I, I look at it the same way almost I looked at that Trevor Lawrence class and I was high on that class. And, like, some of those guys came out and got starts and stuff like that. But let's really go out. Right. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix, you know. Yeah, like, maybe those guys ascend and stuff. But it's like, I'm going I'm to I'm be real. A guy like Spencer Rattler could come out, could come out, get a shot somewhere. He could be terrible. He could suck. He could be a like get back to his prima donna ways. He's a little bit small, whatever. But man, he's like he plays big, man. Like him and Xavier Leggett, like they were they were going toe to toe, like with big boys, bro. Like Bama, like they they were slinging, bro. Like and he didn't have a lot going around him, dude. Like you catch that guy with some weapons, man. I, I guarantee I guarantee you he'll he'll give you a game. And maybe that's too repetitive with Sam Howell, but that. That's the shootout I, I would like to see if they are not waiting uh, till next year or a three-way in, in, in drafting. In, in, but I would like to see Rattler on the roster to, to battle with Sam Howell in 2025. Not saying that's the be-all, end-all, but like that, that would be exciting to me. Um, if there was a project or, or QB taken uh, ahead of those guys next year that's a clear-cut starter and one of those other guys gets bounced, I like that. Um, but I, just got, I got a feeling, man. I just got a feeling, dude. Um, excuse me while I do a, the Kevin Hart thing. What? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, pick your pick your players, man. Pick who you like. That's what this is about. You know, say what you want. But if 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 I'm an NFL quarterback, or if I'm if I'm a coach right now, and I had to play a game right now with a rookie, and you had to say, um, and my team was kind of like middling, and they're like, get out there. Um, uh, Bo Nix, get out there, uh, whoever, <laughs> or get out there, Spence. <laughs> I'm putting Spence in the game, man. Let's see what happens. 7-11, um, 22, 29, 38, or 4, 1.1 mega billions. Who you got? Washington never wins. <laughs> ah, you're funny, Reflect the Sun. I'm caught up on the chat here. Chris says, you mentioned my beloved Supersonics, and I love your hyped-up Seahawks fandom antics, so give us a little Mariner love as well. I saw the Seahawks in the 80s. Keep it, uh, keep it hype, West Seahawks. Okay. Here's where it gets really, really, really weird. Is the Mariners... They're my second NFL or MLB team. Ah... Uh, Due to my fascination and having lived in the San Diego area for a long time as a kid, I'm a Padres fan. And there's nothing. The only thing more painful than being a Mariners fan is being a Padres fan. All that said, I love the Mariners. And they've got, you know, two or three of my favorite baseball players. My favorite baseball player of all time is a Mariner, Ken Griffey. After that, it's Tony Gwynn. But you just got me sad, man, because you had me thinking about baseball. You see how you see how you brought it down? You see how you brought it down? <laughs> you brought that whole level down. Now it sounds like, uh, yeah, you you just beat our my Padres twice. I'm not surprised, Doug. I'm a pot like when you when you like the Padres, you expect nothing less but then to be beaten. <laughs> It's like, bro. But Huskies, Supersonics, Seattle Seahawks, you know, Sounders. He's from San Diego. <laughs> oh, Sai J, you know what it is, man. Uh, okay, therapy is over for thanks for keeping your real pod. <laughs> I'm just real. I'm just real. I knew when we signed all those big name guys, we were going to suck even worse, though. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, back to football talk here. Um, if, you have, if you weren't in on earlier, uh, Abraham Lucas looks like he's going to start the season. Uh, that's great news. Uh, Chad is going to come back there. Um, Dark Horse is to still make this team. Uh, D. Eskridge, uh, Dark Horse to still make the team. Um, Kobe Bryant, Dark Horse to still make the team. That's interesting. Um, Jake Bobo, Dark Horse to be used more than uh, once a game. 
the best catch of this whole NFL season was not T. Higgins. It was Jake Bobo's catch against the Cardinals. I was there. You can go to my wall. You can look at the short. I filmed it live. It was the, one of the greatest concentration catches I have ever seen. And it came from Jake Bobo. Jake Bobo is a good football player. He's not a fluke. They have plans for Jake. I watched Jake. I watched his plays. He never misses anything. He's like the perfect guy. Like this guy, if you tell him to do what, anything, he'll just do it, bro. Jake Bobo is the type of guy that can get you over the hump in a quiet, subtle way. What other players could, could we cut on the reel? Okay, guys that are cut candidates here, like kind of fringe roster guys. Once again, Kobe Bryant. If he doesn't show it in camp, he could get cut. Um, Lance Boykin uh, might not make it. Um, oh, man. You know what? D could get cut. Uh, let's look here. Nick Harris could get cut. Um uh, man, who we may have to cycle through some of the practice squad stuff. Um, Radigan, uh, Radigan could get cut. Um, Daryl Taylor could get cut. Like, like let's be real. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we keep Trey Brown. I mean, I, I'll do a whole other video on who I think makes a 53. Um, but that's interesting. Can't wait to see Mafe Nuoso on the field. Def missed Nuoso. Nuoso was a big loss. Like we noticed how just a big void in our team when he went, man. Like we couldn't we couldn't set any 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 pressures. And it, it, it's thrusting Derek Hall into that leadership role a bit too early. Um, but yeah, Bobo all day. I'm so happy for McDonald though. He's the coach I wanted ever since Pete was gone. And I think uh, I, I hear, and the, all the things I hear about Mike get me excited. Yeah, there's nothing to not be excited about on that front. He's super dope, man. Uh, I think he's going to help us. Uh, all the Ravens, yeah, everybody said McDonald's is just super special. All of the players, uh, all the, all around the league, like, he's that guy, you know? Like, he's the, he's the new type of Carroll. Like, it is what it is. Like, Usher in the new era. He came in much younger. Uh, he's much younger than me, even. So, I mean, that's cool. Um, all right, guys. Uh I'm going to tap out and just enjoy the rest of my night. Um, thanks, brother, man. You're always fun. It's what I like about you. Don't stop. I ain't going to stop, Saijen. Thank you for that super chat. That means a lot to me. Um, unless you want to keep going. If you guys want to keep going, we can. I just got to eat one of these chicken nuggets real quick. Homemade, homemade. We can keep going a little bit. If you want to. Whoa, reflect the sun. It's rude, pardon me, I'm just hungry. Wow, Sajin with the $5 donut, reflect the sun with the $3 donut. Thanks, guys. Much love. If you haven't had an icy, like, slushy Powerade before, pick your color. If you haven't had a slushy Powerade, I swear, I drink, I love this stuff. I know it's not good for you, but it's really good. So bomb. Got to get the 10 easy. <laughs> you said you was going to do something else for us, remember? I'm down to keep going. I miss talking about the football. Yeah, it is hard not to talk about Seahawks football for so long. What else was I going to do? Chris, what did I say I was going to do? Should I do a little mock draft on the iPad? Ooh. One more 49 cent super chat. One more... 23 cent, no, one more 14 yen super chat, and I'll do a mock draft. Yeah, the draft is far away. Oh, it's super annoying. It's super far. But it's super close. I'm going to do a mock draft right now. You're not going to see it. But I'll screenshot it after. Which site do you want me to use? 
I don't have a subscription to PFF. We can use Sports Skeeta. We can use Mock Draft Sim. Whatever. I'm going to do one, though. You guys tell me. The first three people. Two yen. <laughs> she hit me with two yen. Shout out Japan. Sai so Jensen, five bucks for the Mock Draft. Much love, guys. Awesome. You guys are covering um, my Reese's Pieces addiction. <laughs> you guys are so dope, man. Thanks for hanging out with me. An hour and a half in here with this is the freaking 40-year-old whatever I am uh, plus uh, Seahawks fan. Tell me which one you want me to use, guys. Which, which, which mock draft uh, simulator should I use? Tell me. Um... More, more of a Reese's Cups person, Reflect the Sun, but Reese's Pieces is dope, too. Okay, unless somebody calls out whether they want me to use a Pro Football Network, Sports Gita, whatever, I'm just going to use Gita unless, unless uh, you tell me otherwise. And we're going to do a full seven-round mock right now, live. Live. You won't see the screen and stuff. Maybe I should just get a freaking use a MacBook for this. Um, I'm going on Sports Skeeter then. Let's do it. NFL. Mock Draft Simulator. Here we go. Okay. I'm picking the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going full seven rounds. And I'm going to use fast. Drum roll, please. Let's do it. Without a QB. The best defensive line and O-line picks. Without a QB. Okay. Okay, Chris, I'm going to give you what you want because you've been diehard from day one. No QB. Best D-line and O-line picks. Am I allowed to pick any offensive uh, players? Am I allowed to pick any offensive players? But, Chris, this one's for you, bro, because you're the ultimate. I know you're a real savage Seahawks fan. We're going to meet up one day. My bad. We'll link up one day. We'll, we'll talk football in per person. Give the people what they want. All right. So, um, off the board already, Chicago Bears took Marvin Harrison at one. Let's see if you can see it. Bears took Harrison. Caleb went second. It's hard to read there. I'll read it off. Brock Bowers, Fashanu, Turner. Who cares where they went? But off the board already. Um, Adunze, Alt, Drake May off the board. Jaden Daniels off the board. Malik Neighbors off the board. Byron Murphy off the board. Ouch. Quinn Mitchell off the board. Byron Thomas off the board. Amarius Mims off the board. And Talise Fuaga are off the board. We have two trade offers we can work with. Um, the Colts are willing to trade us pick 24 and 46 for pick 16. I like that. Dang. Atlanta is willing to trade our picks 16 and 102 for 43, 74, 77, 79 in the second round uh, next year. Don't like that. What do you guys want to go with? The Colts pick? You want to trade down or you want to stay? Trading down will get us pick 24 and 46. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Because, Chris, we're going with O-line and D-line. And I like, I like the value in the second. I'm trading down. Side jam, we're trading down. You got it? Y'all with me? All right, I've traded down. All right. So, off of the board now, Chop Robinson, Sumi Ataya, Jared Verse, Guyton, Jerzon Newton, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and J.J. McCarthy all went right before us. We're at 24, guys. We've got a trade offer. Pick 24 and 102 to the Chargers for pick 37 and 69. Or we can go pick 24 and 235 for pick 45, 150, and a bunch next year from the Saints. I don't like that. We could trade down with the Carolina Panthers to get pick 33 and pick 63 or pick 65. That would cost us 24 and 30, uh, 235. Should we trade down again? Mind you guys, Troy Fotanu is on the board right now. 
Adani Mitchell's on the board right now. J.C. Latham, Latu, Jackson Powers, Nate Wiggins. This is just the ranking. You want to trade down again? You guys want to trade out of Fatanu? Fatanu is not worth the 23, 23rd overall pick? Fatanu. Darius Robinson still on the board. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call the shots here. I'm not gonna go away without Fotanu. Okay? So I like it. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna take Fotanu and pair him with uh with Grub. Rams wanna trade with us. Fuck them. I'm never trading with them. <laughs> Just kidding. Pardon my French. Sorry. Uh Rams wanna trade our 46. Atlanta wants our 70 set. Nah, we're 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 gonna reject that. Let's stay at 46. Do you, do you see UFC over the weekend? Oh, okay, chill. You guys won't wait for that. Um, I'm rejecting that. I'm not trading with the Rams ever. All right, guys. Um, this is good news. Cooper DeJohn is on the board, but I'm not taking him. That's good news. Um, Ennis Rakestraw, Missouri, corner. He's on the board. Good news, not taking him. Braylon Trice is on the board. More good news, I'm not taking him. Then we come up to Tavondre Sweat and Junior Colson. That is hard for me. Junior Colson, I absolutely think is phenomenal. It could be the linebacker of the future. I love the prospect of that, but I'm taking Tavondre Sweat. We've taken Tavondre Sweat. Now we have Fotanu and Tavondre Sweat. Chris, let's go, baby. All right. Pick 81 for pick 88 in a Green Bay fourth? Nope. Pick 81, a seventh rounder for a 150 from the Saints, a third and a fourth next year? Nope. That's all we've been offered. I'm rejecting those. Let's stay at 81. All right. This is where it gets This is where it gets t uh, tough. Um, JV and Cohen, Cedric Dre, Peyton Wilson, oof. Um, Matt Conclaves, Bucky Irvin, Leonard Taylor, Brandon Coleman, yikes, Trayvon Wallace, Edgar and Cooper. Is Edgar and Cooper going to be there? Ugh. Kieran Amadede, Xavier Leggett, Theo Johnson, Austin Booker. Wow. Guys. This is really hard. Gray, I'm not high enough on. Peyton Wilson, man. Oh, I like Peyton Wilson. It'd be a reach. They're telling me it's a reach to go for Cooper over Wilson. That's crazy. 6'3", 230. Man, this is tough. Man, should we just get Brandon Coleman, man? And just go super crazy in the trenches? Yeah, that's a good point. Who's the biggest, fastest one of them all? <laughs> Chris, you're absolutely hilarious, man. I might go out on a limb here, though. I might get stupid. Mm, you guys might not like this. But I... I'm going to reach here. I'm going to go with Brandon Coleman. Now, the jury's out on whether Coleman will do this or that, but I do know one thing. He's going to be a nasty player in the NFL. Um, trenches are sewed, guys, in a way. Uh, pick 102 for the Jets want to trade us a bunch. I kind of like this. The Jets want to trade 102 for 111, 185, 256, and 257. And all we got to give them is a fourth back next year. Let's do that, man. Let's stack the boat. What do you think? I'm doing it. All right. Let's see what we can come up with here. 
Casey wants to do something stupid. I'm rejecting that. All right. So we got some big boys here. Um, let's see what we're doing here. All right. Not a ton left um, to do with the trenches, right? But look who's still available. Cornelius Johnson, Brendan Rice, Malachi Corley. Wow, that's interesting. Tight end, Cade Stover. Mm, that's interesting. Um, we're not doing any quarterbacks. We decided that. Um, we've stacked up the guards. I like that. Should we go look at the edge? Ooh, Javon Solomon out of Troy. Monster. Doing it. Just took Javon Solomon out of Troy. The boy is an attack menace. Menace. He's everything Daryl Taylor ever wanted to be. I got him. Javon Solomon, edge. We're looking nasty. All right. We're up here. At 118. We're at 118. No trade proposals. Ooh. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is still on the board. DeMar Glaze. Mason Smith, Layden Robinson. Damn, I'm not passing up Trotter Jr., man. I don't care how small he is. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., I'm going with the lineage. That's depth at linebacker at least. This is looking good for like a mean potato style draft. You feel me? Um, nice, nice. So we sewed that up. We're at pick 179. We've also got 185, 192. Damn, we got a few picks left. Um, you want to stay in the trenches? You want to stay in the trenches? Yeah, many will fall from grace in this draft. It's for sure. It does. It happens every year. I kind of want a tight end, but I like the tight end value all the way up to like Wiley. And so we got Culp, Wiley, and Rip Ryman still there. I like Ryman too, man. He's nice. Yeah, I'm out here, man. I'm active. Good to see you too, Alara. How about Ryman, though? Got to put some offense in the mix here. Let's look at receiver. Jeremiah Thrash. Cowing, Fournay, Taj Washington. Nah, man, they got Luke McCaffrey way down there too. That's crazy. Running back, no. Okay. Trenches are so, guys. We got edge, too. Maybe let's get, like, a, a different type of defensive tackle. Ooh, this guy. I'm going to reach for this guy. Miles Murphy out of North Carolina. A beast inside, bro. I'm going out there, too. He's not He's not that the Murphy you're thinking, but watch this tape. North Carolina. He's nasty. He fits us. All right. We're at 185. So Murphy, they say that's early probably. I don't care. Linebacker. I, I like what we have at linebacker. Safety. Oof. Oof. Tyree Swift. Swift. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait there. I'm going to wait for Vaki, I think, or um, Oladapo. Actually, maybe I'll just take the money. Richardson, man. Oof. It's actually pretty good. Damn. I need a tight end. I don't want to pay for one. I'm going tip rhyme in Illinois. All right. This is looking okay. We're at 192. Ryman was going to go there. That's a nice look. More defense. Damn, the safety stuck around. Yeah. I went tip. I went tip Ryman there. Damn, Demani Richardson, I like, man. He's a run defender. He's he's nasty. Um, yeah, he doesn't get any picks, though. He's not fast. Mm. What am I at here? Can I get Oladapo later? Man, I need to I need to hit on him. Um Yeah, for sure. You're absolutely right. Uh, in terms of the Pro Bowlers and Super Bowl teams, it's important to have good TE. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Man, I just can't keep bolstering that side here. Uh, what up, Julian? How you doing, man? I'm just doing this little mean potatoes kind of chunky mock draft. Me and uh, me and Chris here have kind of decided. 
that we want to bolster this interior offensive line and the edge in the DT. So we've gotten kind of chonky with it, but it's kind of fun. Um, but I got to take a flyer on somebody here. Uh, do, 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 sorry, I was tripping here on defense. Um, let's go to Georgia here with Tyreek Smith. Uh, he has insane. Um, I like him. I like him. I know. Um, I know he's annoying in a lot of ways, but he has really good ball skills. I think he's the type of guy that knows how to play really against really elite receivers and and how to how to take them away out of the equation. I like that. I'm going to go Tyreek Smith. All right, not we're on our. Uh, oh, we got two picks right at the end too. Ooh, this is getting crazy. All right, should we just go on a wide here? Man, Luke McCaffrey is there. I'm going to get that just to troll. I like that. Luke McCaffrey. Yeah, he's too small. So was Tyler Lockett. Oh, now we got the last two picks. 256 and 257, guys. This is wild. Man. Smart, we need them guards and edge and D linemen. Have a fun stream, bro. Great to see you, man. I'm almost done this. I'll, I'll be reading it off here. All right. Uh, should we get some contingency? Nah, that's okay. All right, let's do this. Let's go with um, uh, Isaac Arendo, uh running back Louisville. I like him. He's contingency for if something weird's happening with uh, with Kenny Mack. Um, that's a good pick. And then in, for, for the very last pick, let's do something super trippy, man. Um, let's bring in Jordan Travis um, from Florida State. Somehow was about to go undrafted. Yo, Chris, this is kind of nasty. This isn't one of my more exciting ones, but it's a it's a pretty cool meat and potatoes one. I'll try to read it off to you guys. All right, so here's what we did before I go. We traded down a couple times. We traded down once, but then traded down again. Um, so we got Troy Fatanu uh, from Washington. Uh, that's huge. Then, uh, that was at 24. Then at 46, we got Tavondre Sway. <laughs> Boy, if that really happened, come on now. Don't act like you wouldn't be happy. Then... What many think is trippy is we got Brandon Coleman um, from TCU. So back to back to back big boys, uh, big boys in the middle. Someone's going to have to play the left. Someone's going to have to, you know, this is, if, if nothing else, this gives us insane depth at the O-line. And that's what bug, uh, pardon me, bugged me last year. Coleman might be somebody I swap out, but I'm doing it for Chris. I want I want some big boys. I probably wouldn't pick Coleman there, but it's just it, it, it makes me dig deeper into the tape as well. Uh, Javon Solomon, I, I like this guy. I like his ability just to just to get in the backfield consistently and 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 mind the run. See, that's at one eleven. At one eighteen, everyone was sleeping on Jeremiah Trotter Jr. because he's undersized. It looks like McDonald likes these undersized linebackers with Jerome Baker and 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 who would fit better than Jeremiah Trotter's kid into that mix uh, or um, 179 not the Murphy you're hoping for but Miles Murphy watched his tape last night North Carolina um, he's 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 pretty savage um, Tip Ryman he's not going to break you apart uh, he's not Travis Kelsey but he's not Will Disley uh, he can be that move guy, and he can block really well. So I like him. Um, he's he's a perfect Seahawks tight end. I would have rather had Cade Stover, um, but that's it. Yeah, we just got a wall. We're just building the wall, Jon Snow. Um, Tyreek Smith out of Georgia. It's tough for me, but I went with a guy that I know could be coached up. Um, I know has played against guys. He's not going to embarrass himself. Uh, but it has good ball skills, and I think a player like that's the kind of safety I want. It's now that Quandre is not there, I don't think we have a safety with ball skills. Let's see if he can develop into that. Uh, Luke McCaffrey, nothing else said. We're doing it to troll the Niners and, you know, get get Tyler's replacement in the slot. 
Uh, Isaac Gorando, watch his tape out of Louisville. Actually, it was put onto him by uh, Brandon Kane. Uh, just just mentioned his name. Um, so that does it. And Jordan Travis taking a flyer on Travis. Um, you know, I didn't get my Spencer Rattler pick, but uh, Travis, you know, he's got a long way to go, but there's talent there. Hate seeing other teams embarrass the Hawks on game. Yeah, it's done. It's done. It's over. I'm sick of it. It's tired. Let's get the beef and potatoes. That is the Chris Go Hawks draft. I'll be doing some of my own soon. Guys, I got a dip too. Much love. It's been a slice. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for the super chats. But more importantly, just thanks for tuning in. And make sure to share the channel with your homies, man. Let them know I'm out here. Uh, I got to go make that, uh, that Devin Witherspoon short. Much love. And go Hawks every single time. It's go Hawks. Peace.